breadfruit has no seeds. To propagate, we need to air layer. Let's get some tools ready. Scissors, pliers, pruning knife, and we need to have root hormone handy and uh, some alcohol to sterilize our tools, keep everything uh, perfectly clean. This is some compressed coir coconut fiber or peat moss. That's the mechanism that the roots grow into. We've soaked the peat moss here for several hours. To start, we're gonna sterilize our tools. That's why we have the, the alcohol. We don't want to spread any infections. So the first step is actually to peel the bark off of the tree. We're going to get some of the leaves out of the way. We just need to see what we're doing here. Here's a nice straight stem, perfect for, perfect for mark cutting. Um, what we're doing, see the pliers has some a rounded area with some sharp teeth. We spotted this on YouTube. You just go back and forth carefully. You don't want to break the root off, but you scrape all the outer bark off. That's the first step. Importantly, you then scrape off the cambium layer. So you gotta go all around, all around the tree, carefully scrape that all off. See how that's being done, go behind the tree as well. If you are way up in a tree, way up at the top of the tree, this would be hard to do. We happen to be doing this with house plants. This is a mafala breadfruit tree. We've propagated these. This is a picture of work that we did previously, showing how the cambium layer has to be uh, cleaned off. This is about a half inch stretch of open area. The diagram shows the different layers of the tree bark. So now this is completely scraped off. We're gonna spread some rooting hormone, rooting compound, indole-3-butyric acid, comes by different brand names. Spread it liberally all around. You don't need a lot, but might as well use it. It's not super expensive. Now we have the wetted peat moss in a plastic bag. I like to use a plastic bag because it has a secure bottom so water won't leak out at the bottom. Okay, now we're gonna cut the side with the scissors a bit to open up the bag so that we can wrap it around the tree. See here that this bag is, has integrity, it's not going to leak. And so this is a very long stretch of the video where we're showing the peat moss really for quite a long time. Um, now we're gonna cut the side of the bag, <clears throat> open it up, cut halfway down one side. And you'll see how we use this to wrap around the tree trunk in just a moment. But this uh, peat moss is dripping wet. You have to soak it for several hours. It takes a while for it to get wet. We have a string tied around the tree ahead of time unless you have three hands or someone to help you, you get that ready in advance. It's a little bit of a delicate step. You need to have the wetted peat moss completely surrounding that area of bark that has been stripped off. See, we're trying to wrap this around. Probably could have cut the bag a little bit deeper, but um, no harm done. It's not difficult to, to, to get this to work. You just have to make sure that there's plenty of water and the rooting hormone. So we're gonna tie the top of the tie the top of the bag around the around the tree, around the bark. This is one of the larger stems that we've attempted to do mark cutting with. Usually we work with stems about the thickness of a pencil. So now we're tying the top of the bag around. We're propping up the bag on a little crook of the tree so it doesn't slide down, so that the entire scraped off area is covered by the peat moss, that's essential. And then you can't have the, the water dry out. If it, start, if it looks like it's starting to dry out, you can get a syringe with a tiny needle and inject a bit more water into the bag carefully. That would actually work. Um, I've done that a few times. So anyway, here you see where we're wrapping this up around the tree. What we need to do now is sit back and wait for four weeks. The bag is clear plastic. That works very well. You can see the roots developing. If that spot is exposed to the sun, though, it would get hot. So you'd have to wrap that in aluminum foil. Okay, so we're ready to sit back, relax, and wait for four weeks. We're showing you some results graphically and with photos 
of work that we had done previously. We've had very good success with this um, over the years. We've had 100% success, so it's doable. It's just a little inconvenient when you have to climb the tree to get it done. But here, what you're seeing is we snipped off after the roots have formed, you snip off that branch, then you repot it, you take off some of the leaves because the root system, when you first have the marcotted stem, is very delicate, it's a bit fragile, so you want to not get it damaged. And it can only absorb just so much water and nutrients from the potting soil, so you have to trim off a lot of the leaves. So that's the work of propagation by air layering for breadfruit.